This is Menwith Viaduct on the Selby to Driffield Railway. This interlinking railway spans the counties of North Yorkshire and the East Riding of Yorkshire. Menwith Viaduct was completed in 1848 and was built for a double width track with the intention for the line to be such. Due to financial difficulties, the line originally opened as a single line. It was however doubled in 1889 when profits from the freight hauled on the busy line financed the expansion. This volume of freight came from the nearby farms which had, until the railway opened, used waterways to transport their goods to market. During the life of this railway, freight brought the majority of the profit, but only made up around half of the traffic. Passenger services included seaside excursion through traffic and commuter services, interlinking Driffield to Selby in under one hour. Unfortunately, by the 1920s, passenger numbers had dwindled and many passenger services were reduced. During the Second World War, munitions were carried on the line to several RAF bases in North Yorkshire and the East Riding of Yorkshire. These munition services carried on in smaller numbers into the 1960s. When road transport started to overtake rail in volume, the line soon fell into debt. The passenger services all but stopped for excursions in 1954 and freight services stopped in 1964, spelling the end of useful life for this magnificent viaduct. We had permission to make this documentary, however, the landowners wanted the location kept secret as it is on arable land and next to a nature reserve, so please respect this when commenting. Join Paul and myself, Andy, on this explore of the viaduct and railway embankment to see what's left of this forgotten industrial relic. So behind me I've got the viaduct, this has got 10 arches to it, sadly it's lost the bridge part, that went a couple of years ago. So we've just noticed whilst walking along that that arch there in the centre of the screen now is actually bricked up, but yeah the bridge part's gone, sadly that was only removed a couple of years ago, but the river there went very high today, there's been a lot of rain and it's coming this way now we're walking up to the railway embankment now because we believe there's some more arches in these trees so we're going to go along and check those out I haven't got the gimbal on today because it's minus two and the gimbal doesn't like the cold it just starts freezing up so unfortunately the footage might be a bit more bumpy than normal You can see here where the nature itself is taking it back, where this tree has literally grown around the end of the bridge, or the viaduct as it's called. It's literally grown on it. And then we can see there where it's been strengthened at some point. It's literally a railway line that's been bolted to it to pull it all together. So up onto the embankment we go. This is where the actual railway lines were laid and fitted. And this was the Selby to Market Wheaton Railway. Selby's that way. Market Wheaton, that way. Let's go on this viaduct and see what's left. Some of the rail winds are, railings are still excellent. Paul, is this? Is that part of signalling? That little wheel there. That? Yes, that would have been uh, a wheel for the uh, signalling wire. Oh, like a pulley system. That's a cool farm, that. Yeah. 
Cool. That really is. Nice. Yes, it would be, yeah, either a, a distant or a semaphore. And then there's another one. So this handrail that we thought was, was actually part of the structure for the railway, for the railway signalling, because there's another one there, another pulley. And they actually go all the way across. We're going to go on to the, we're going to go on to the viaduct now uh, and have a look at it. Paul's just pointed out that there's no refuge on this viaduct. This would have had two railway lines on it, so there's no space for signalers or railway workers to get across. So there is this little wooden walkway along the edge of the viaduct, so railway workers could get across safely if if railway traffic was to come. Just walking along now to the bridge section that's been removed, quite probably for scrap value, because these metal bridges are worth a lot of scrap, so people come and take them away. And that's where the bridge across would have been. And it would have been laid on here in, the, in 1848, I believe this was finished, or completed. And the icy waters of the River Derwent flow below. So we're just walking, uh, walking along the railway line now. There's no Dave today. Dave's working on one of his motorcycle projects. We're probably going to do a workshop tour at some point if you're interested in that. Leave a comment. Also, it'll really help me out if you haven't already, if you press subscribe and hit the little bell, that'll really help me out. Thank you. So we're on the railway embankment now. We believe, we saw earlier on, we saw some more arches. So we believe there's another bridge or underpass of some sort a little further up here. Oh, of course, yeah, because this, this water here isn't, this isn't a river, this is just a floodplain and the river's bust its banks and flooded onto here, this is actually farmland so under here there'll be the farmer's underpass which we might not be able to access due to ah, it's here I can just see the railings coming up now let's go oh wow it's actually grown round this is nature at its best. The tree's actually grown around the handrail. Full on grown around the railing. That is the power of nature right there. Has it? See, this is the hidden cost of building railways. All these little extra viaducts and bridges that were built as part of the railway infrastructure that just weren't considered. You know, the cost spent building these railways compared to the cost saved in the beaching cuts, it, it didn't add up. The maths just didn't add up, but they just did it anyway. They just closed the railways to, sh to save a, a very short time. Um, gaining money. Let's look at the effort and the detail that would have gone into building just this single viaduct. This would have taken months and months, if not years, to complete. So we just checked out under the viaduct, we're going to go above it now. What I've just spotted is the concrete over the actual bridge part still got the tar on it. This tar stops the water getting into the concrete in winter and then freezing. That's what blows the concrete apart. It's alright on vertical structures like this because the water doesn't lay on it but on horizontal structures like this 
it sits on it and soaks in then freezes and causes problems such as cracking splitting and it actually weakens water itself can weaken an entire bridge structure such as this one so we're just uh, sort of commenting on how cold it is it's actually starting to affect the camera the battery levels dropping really quickly a lot faster than normal do you know where the signal box was then Paul can you tell by the pulleys or does it not mean anything um, depends how far the station is that way and the um, station house this way I don't think the station house had a signal box but we never know it could, be, it could have been a ground frame what's a ground frame basically it's a it's a signal box but it's like outside you know there's, there's no there's no structure to have any comforts of working and normally there's just a few s signal levers and that and um, not just signalmen can do it but um, trained staff can station staff station master they, they can all um, do it usually a ground frame is for sardines or a yeah. spare all oh, right okay not actual main lines as such yes they can be on main lines really wow yeah um it's just it's just another way of having the means to divert trains to a siding or to a branch line that doesn't require a signal box so yeah oh very good thank you and this is one of the pulleys that was used to hold the control wires from a signal box or a ground frame Whilst walking down the track away from the viaduct towards Selby, we found our first railway telegraph pole. Just signs of life of what used to be here. So this is the second fence post like this we found at the side of the track. They look a bit too modern. Do you know what these would have been used for? Because they're not part of any fence. They're just in the edge of the ballast. Uh, they're very solid. What would these have been for? Leave a comment if you know. So we've got, Paul's just found this. They're just saying that, look at how many pulls there are for all the different pulleys that have been on this, on this railway at some point. What do you think that's all about, Paul? Well, there probably would have been a distance signal pulley, a home signal pulley, and a sectional home signal pulley. Um, there could have even been a, a shunting signal as well, depending on if there was any sardines. It looked like there was at the railway house that's further down that line. There was a railway house down there, wasn't there? So there could have been a little coal siding. So this railway has been closed that long. I mean, it's getting on for 70 years this has been closed for. And the decay itself, or the nature that took over the railway after it closed is decaying itself. So Paul's just found an apple tree at the side of the railway line and a lot of these apple trees grew because people used to be on the train they'd eat an apple and throw it out the window and then it'd just sit on the side and then that would grow into a tree and that's how interesting the sort of the little railway stories and gems and stuff that tree there could have been from someone throwing an apple out of the window because this isn't a place where that sort of tree would grow there's all apples in the water down there Looks like a pedestrian tunnel. It does, not it? Actually. So you've got to bear in mind that this water is about a metre deep and it isn't usually here. Yeah. So this could have been a little walkway for people to get through from one farm to another. Because they wouldn't have wanted people walking over the railway line to get from one field to the next. Because the viaduct that went over back there was probably three quarters of a mile away now. As we head down the railway. So we're on the railway embankment now, and this has got wider. So this is now at least two tracks and maybe one siding, or just two e two tracks that are spaced out a little. But 
The navvies never used to make the railway what embankments wider than they needed to be, just because of cost and time. So they were only ever, they always had a purpose. Every brick, every sleeper had a purpose. So we're gonna continue this walk now. We're at the end of the tree line now. Market Wheaton's that way. Selby's that way. Uh, we've just found, just found some railway boundary markers just in this field here. It's these wooden fence posts here. They're the boundary markers. And behind me, there, I believe that power station, if it exposes out, that power station there is Drax, which featured in one of my recent videos. One of the largest coal burning thermal power stations in the United Kingdom. One of the last ones that was built by British Power, I believe. So, the deer up there. See the deer, Paul? Right in the centre section, and there's another one behind it. One, two, three deer. They'll be sniffing the floor because you know we've been here. Three, four, four deer, all in a row. I don't know if you can see those. As it's, as it's January, we're having, we're going healthy. We're having some fruit, so it's a uh, Terry's chocolate orange for snacks today. Mm. <laughs> nom nom. <laughs> nom nom. <laughs> we don't do out by halves on this. We do it in segments. Look, Terry's chocolate orange. Nom nom nom. So there's this lump of sandstone just on the track bed. Yeah, we've just found another one of them pieces of sandstone, just the same, just on the edge of the track, which I is. Think, I think the cable run, the cable, cable runners. Yeah, like stairs to put yeah. the the roller on. Mm. Ah, right. So that was it is part of the railway then. Absolutely. Yeah. We just found this whilst walking. Yeah, lumps of coal, lump of coal, lump of coal. It's like they've chucked a. Do you reckon they've chucked fire out, or that's just fell out the tender? On the big one, along. Tender as it's gone up the incline. Well, yeah, there's all, the yeah, there's all bits of coal here. Yeah, yeah it's fell off the coal wagons, hasn't it? Yeah, when it's not the That looks like lava rock or coal that's been burnt. Yes. Is that burnt coal? Is that slag? Yes. Where well, they've knocked slag out. Aye. So if they've knocked the slag through and coal's fell through with it, this isn't even burnt. Burnt that hasn't been combusted. Has it? A lot of it as well. No. The right in my glove there, look. <laughs> yeah, so I've got the drone up. Paul's just pointed out that there's some railway lines on the edge of the viaduct just to support it. They've had some structural problems at some point. And they've had to, they've had to bolster it up. Just flying the drone now. Uh, whilst we're here, there's a Grade 2 listed structure uh, which is coming into the centre of the screen now. You see that? That is one of the crossings over the Darewind. I just wanted to just wanted to drone that whilst we were here. There's a reflection from you. Yeah, it, it comes out all right on that camera. It looks bad on the viewer, but yeah, there's a great two listed structure there. Just wanted to overfly that and I'll just get a shot of that. That'll be up on my Instagram. There we go. Check out my Instagram, ALW, Ex ALW Exploration. And I've got Paul with me, he's also on Insta. So, yeah. Hope you're enjoying uh, this, this type of content we're getting for you. Old railways and... I just love the engineering with it. And the, the cost and the the energy and the expertise the navvies used to, to build these railways only for less than a hundred years later to get rid of them again. I just find it fascinating that there's still quality artefacts like that still around. Don't forget to check Paul out as well. ALW Exploring Paul is a cameraman, he's a professional photographer and I'm very honoured to have Paul with me. He's 
part of the ALW exploration team. We've got the drone coming back in now. It's just there, look. Coming back into land. I'm going to land it right there so you can get some footage of me landing the drone if you want. The landing spot's that. I need the landing pad. She got caught in some grass there. I was only about 150 millimetres out of the landing zone though, so not bad for a 20 minute flight. There we are, there's a new drone look. So I'll pack this up and on to the next location. Thank you so much for watching. Low battery warning. Low battery warning. <laughs> Right and Q, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps me out when you do that. I've got new content every Tuesday and Thursday at 8pm. We're going to do a monthly live stream as well on a Saturday, first Saturday of the month, 9pm. Thank you. Bye-bye. Looking over my shoulder Looking back at your door In my head it goes over and over Should I leave or want it more? Looking over